Hello, everyone. I'm Aureen Pinto Wagner. I'm a clinical child psychologist, and I specialize in working with children, teens, and adults with anxiety disorders and OCD. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about ERP for children and teens. ERP is a treatment technique stands for Exposure and Response Prevention. And it is really a specific cognitive behavioral technique. Cognitive behavioral refers to you know, treatments that help us change our thoughts, feelings, and actions. And ERP is one of the techniques under CBT that is specifically geared towards OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder and symptoms. And OCD is, you know, consider a more complicated, more difficult condition to treat because it consists of obsessions that are unwanted, intrusive thoughts, images, or impulses that pop into people's minds. They're not looking for something to worry about. They just pop in. They tend to be extreme and bizarre. And so people get very upset about them. They're very distressing. And then they do rituals or compulsions which are actions to try to get rid of the obsessions and get rid of the feelings. And obsessions and compulsions go hand in hand. And ERP stands for, like I said, exposure and response prevention. Exposure involves facing the fears or you know, deliberately confronting the obsessive fears. And response prevention refers to not doing the rituals and they must go hand in hand to be effective. It's not enough to just face your fears. So for example, if I think there are a lot of germs on the doorknob and I go touch the doorknob, that's exposure. But then if I run and wash my hands afterwards then I'm doing the ritual, so that kind of cancels out the exposure. That's why exposure and response prevention must go hand in hand. Now, as you might imagine, doing exposure and response prevention doesn't sound like the easiest thing. It sounds like something people with OCD don't want to do. It's actually the opposite of what they want to do. And therefore it's really important to help, especially children and teens, but even adults, really understand what OCD is, how it works, how it makes things worse if they keep doing the rituals, and then help them understand why exposure is important and how it works. And that's really what I specialize in, creating this readiness or preparation for treatment that then makes people more willing to engage in exposure. So essentially, the first step is to recognize that obsessions are false alarms. They are not true. They're just alarm bells going off in one's brain when there's really no danger. So for example, if the fire alarm goes off and you're supposed to think there's a fire and run out of the building, but then someone announces, oh, sorry, false alarm, someone just blew out the birthday candles. So do you see the alarms are going off, but it was just the birthday candles. And so when you start recognizing that that's what obsessions are, it makes it much easier to say, oh, then I don't have a building, or then I don't have to do my rituals. For young kids like elementary schoolers, preschoolers, and some middle schoolers, I use the analogy of worry tricks like your mind is playing tricks on you. Look, there's a spider on your head. And kids really get that idea that, you know, they'll smile and laugh. And I say, what did I just try to do? And I say, you tried to trick me. And I say, yes, because you understood it was a trick. You didn't have to be scared. But you see, there's two types of worry tricks or false alarms, basically. One of them tells you things are going to be terrible, awful. You know, it's bad up here. And then the second one says is, you can't handle it. You're not brave enough. And so those are the main ideas behind what keeps OCD going. And these are the three things that make OCD worse. What causes OCD is very complicated, but in cognitive behavioral theory, we believe that these three things make OCD worse, thoughts, feelings, and actions. And I help children and teens understand this with these visuals and graphics and explain them in a very personalized way. These are the ways in which OCD can make you think. Which ones of these are true for you? 
and many, you know, elementary, middle schoolers, teens obviously can read this. If they're too young, I'll just verbalize it or ask their parents to help them out. But generally, you know, recognizing, oh, this is what the false alarms are. You know, awful things are going to happen. You're a bad person. You shouldn't have done that. You know, did you, did you make sure everything was okay and it's going to be your fault? You need to be sure. You can't make any mistakes. And then when you have thoughts like that, this is how you might feel. And once again, I give them a chance to describe all their feelings. And it's not just about being anxious. It's about a lot of other feelings too. And when you feel like that, your feeling temperature goes up. So this is a tool that's a very key part of exposure and response prevention. And I've developed this particular feeling thermometer. It's a 10 point scale that helps children, teens and adults uh, visualize and see that, you know, even though we all have anxiety and bad feelings, that false alarms can really spike it, spike our anxiety up there to that eight, nine, 10. And when that happens, then we get so frightened. We think it's an emergency that we really can't even handle something rationally or logically or realistically. And then when your feeling temperature spikes or shoots up like that, then you want to do things to try to fix it. And that's what the rituals are. I'm going to run and wash my hands or take a long shower to get all those germs off. Or I'm going to make sure I do some touching and tapping for good luck to avoid the bad luck. Or people might do silent rituals in their minds, like I'll say a prayer or I'll say lucky words or numbers or repeat the same things or rehash it and then it'll be better. Or I'm not going there, I'm not touching that, I'm not doing that. Now, strangely, everyone thinks if I do these things, it'll make my OCD better. But in reality, what happens is it makes the OCD worse and people don't realize that it actually becomes a cycle of escape and avoidance. So if you look at the graph on the left-hand side, if I have to touch the doorknob or touch somebody's pencil or pen, that's exposure, I'm touching something dirty, it makes my anxiety go up, it shoots up to the panic peak, I engage in some rituals or escape and all rituals are a form of escape. And that makes my anxiety drop quickly. As soon as I wash my hands, I'm like, whew, okay. I got rid of those germs and I feel relieved. But the next time I have to touch the doorknob or the pencils, what's gonna happen? Same thing. And I show this graph to children and teens because most of them can really get it with an explanation using, using an example from their lives that basically, what are you gonna do the next time you're in this situation? Same thing. And then again and again, and then basically it becomes a repeated cycle of doing rituals to handle your obsessions. And the problem is escape and avoidance prevent you from learning two things. One, it's safe, nothing bad will happen. And two, you can handle the feelings. You learn to tolerate them. You'll get used to them the same way you get used to cold water in a swimming pool. So this escape actually prevents safety learning and it keeps perpetuating or reinforcing danger learning. So ERP is a very effective technique. It has a lot of scientific support. It is um, the first line treatment of choice for OCD in adults and primarily for kids and teens, although sometimes children and teens with moderate to severe OCD may also need medication. But basically exposure and response prevention teach people skills to change how they react to the obsessions and their distress. Teach them to face their fears and do the opposite of what OCD is making them do. And they'll learn that it's a false alarm and that rituals and escape are unnecessary because our bodies learn to tolerate distress they habituate, they get used to, they tolerate discomfort the same way we get used to any other sensation like cold water in a pool. And again, children and teens can really relate to that analogy of getting used to the cold water in the swimming pool. But of course, there's no magic in it. You have to practice. It's a set of skills that takes time, patience, effort, and practice. And the more you practice, the easier it gets. 
And really what you're going to learn to do with ERP for OCD is to cool down your feeling temperature. You know, it's spiked up unnecessarily with a false alarm and you're going to learn to bring it down to what's reasonable and rational. It doesn't have to be one or zero, that's not normal. Most of us have a range of feelings every day. So the goal is not to make ourselves rid of anxiety or bad feelings, it's to just learn to tolerate reasonable feelings in a reasonable way. I developed this metaphor of the worry hill to describe exposure and response prevention and what happens. And this is something I routinely use with children, teens and adults, that when we face our fears, it's like riding a bicycle up and down a big worry hill. That's exposure when you're going up, it's tough and you're huffing and you're puffing and you want to quit and escape and go back down but you have to stick it out. And only when you stick it out, you get to the top of the hill and then you get to coast on the other side of the hill. And that's the good part. That's when you learn to tolerate or habituate. And that's how you can say, I beat it, I conquered it. I'm learning how to handle my anxiety and my OCD. And so with that, I hope that you will be able to utilize these strategies and find appropriate treatment. Thank you.